Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. It's season four, episode six, entitled The Stranger of Greenleaf. If you haven't watched the review for the last episode, make sure to check that out. For those of you who are new to the channel, I'll do a quick recap and then at the end, I'll give the reviews. I'll also put the minute mark indications in the comments for those that have already seen the episode and they just want the review. So that's all coming up next. <laughs> it's bunny grace finally reveals her secret to her mother letting her know that she has a son and lady may i don't know if it's the writing or what but she seems pretty calm there's not really a gargantuan reaction of shock there's this calm of oh well you know we've got to bring him here and he's got to be welcomed and it's kind of this awkward reaction in her being so calm but she seems very welcoming and she makes it known that the family has to know about my grandson and we've got to fill everybody in and I've got to get everybody over here to discuss this information and as she's telling that to Grace we have Charity that walks in and says you know well what's going on what's the big news and Lady May says well you know well, we got something to tell you we also sees that she feels in Bishop about the news and he has more of a realistic response like, wow, you know, there were past conversations that I had with Grace and I could kind of tell that there was something that she wanted to tell me, but she didn't really go fully in. And wow, that whole time my daughter was troubled and not only was she troubled, she was pregnant. So he has this reflecting bag, the shoulda, coulda, wouldas of what maybe was trying to be brought to his attention as a father. But he has more of a realistic response to me than Lady May. Word is out and about about Jacob in the situation with the Red Devils team and Corinne is in her assistance area at her desk looking at the play back and just in amazed of it all. And Jacob walks up and he sees her reviewing the video and he says, come on, you know, how, how bad is it? You know, what are, what are people saying on the internet? I need you to go in and kind of see what's going on. And she's just like, it's everywhere. Everybody knows all about it. You know, it, pretty much everybody knows and it's not a good look. Charity, of course, she cannot wait to share this new juicy information with Phil. And she slides and floats into his office and says, you won't believe the information that I have and you're just gonna give me a big hug and you are just gonna love me after I share this information with you and you just gotta stand up because I know you're gonna give me a hug and he's just like well, you know well, what is it she fills him in that Grace has this son that's coming to town and not only does she have a son but it's Noah's and what was interesting about this scene is that Phil says well you know it's news, but you know, that's really not anything that's bad about her. You know, she didn't have an abortion, you know. You're telling me that she gave up the son for adoption, so that's not too bad. So it's kind of like he's weighing her sins, seems like, or he's trying to see which ones are worthy of exposure, which is pretty disturbing of how that's the way that he's used to working. He's used to playing some God-esque person of what to expose about certain people and what to do. He keeps saying, oh, you know, that's about her, but it's really something that can kind of knock her off her rocker, kind of knock her down off, off her high horse. Well, she had a baby, but at least she gave the baby up for adoption, and, and at least it wasn't an abortion, so... It's news, so eh, very disturbing. <laughs> AJ calls Grace to alert her that, hey, I've been arrested and you gotta come help me. Come help me out. Grace, Grace goes to the police and she goes to the jailhouse to see what's going on and they go into the holding cell for him and he's telling her, 
look, you got to tell them that you were with me until about midnight and you were consoling me uh, as a Christian consultant and helping me through my bad times since I just got out of jail. And you've got to say that for me. And Grace is pretty reluctant in saying that you want me to lie to the cops? And AJ is saying you, saying you help strangers. Like, think about it. I just got out. They're saying that I fit the description of someone on a video. It's not me. They don't know if they have any suspects. I fit the description. So they're just trying to find something to pin this crime on. You help strangers. Why don't you just help me? Why don't you just say this for me so I can get out of jail? Say that you were with me at around midnight. You were at my apartment. Do this for me. And he's looking deeply in her eyes, trying to convince her that it wasn't me. I, I, I wasn't the person that was robbing this pharmaceutical store after hours and taking prescribed medicines. It wasn't me. Please lie for me to the police. Jacob tries to talk to Phil and, and he tries to tell him, look, I was trying to break up a fight. You know, I, it doesn't look the way it seems. It wasn't something that serious. I tried to break up a fight. You know, why don't you just reconsider this? And feels just like, no, you're already in some mess. It's just something that happened to you. And maybe it's a blessing in disguise to get you out of here. So, so no, I won't reconsider. You're still fired. And, you know, that's just the way that it is. And feel to get even more under Jacob's skin, he tells him that just because you're a child of a pastor doesn't mean that you're anointed. And you could tell it makes him so angry. It makes Jacob so angry. And he's just like, I suggest you leave my office before I say or do anything that I may regret. And you might want to leave. And Phil is just gloating in it all because you know in his mind, he is taking off names off his list of family members to get out of the way and out of the church. So he sees it as a double win. You got yourself in a situation that kind of made my job easy. This is this is how this character feel is playing out all of the situations within the Greenleaf family. Grace, she sits down to speak with the detective and the detective is telling her, we need a statement from you. And he can be released, but it's all based on you. And Grace says, well, how is it just based on me? And he says, well, depending on what you say, he's a free man and, and, and he can go. But before you make any statement, let me pull out this recorder and record you. Oh, you know, the same procedure that we did when we discussed and talked about you and the situation with your uncle. So it already lets you know that this detective is already having thoughts about Grace before she even speaks. You're referring back to a previous case that's already gone it's in its process of uh is it being investigated is it still investigate being investigated and if it is it's this tone as if he already doesn't like her and he already has bad vibes about her but it, it, it not as a detective but a very spiteful and angry uh, a tone with grace and oh you know how to do this just like the statements that you gave last time so it's foreshadowing that this detective is either already had it has it in for grace or that he's been watching her this uh, this entire time by who knows who to keep an eye on grace and grace she thinks about it and she says, well, you know, that's fine. You can record this conversation. And he says, well, where were your whereabouts with AJ? And we need to know what happened. And she thinks about it again. And she's looking at AJ and she's looking at the detective because she's trying to make the decision. Am I going to lie for him? Am I going to lie for AJ? Not knowing or having any idea if he did rob the pharmacy store and if she should fit the trust and 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 should I should I tell this lie to save AJ being in the situation that she's in trying to gain those cool points with her son and not being there in the 
first place, she goes ahead and she says that I was with AJ with him from about nine to midnight and I was consulting him from a Christian perspective, seeing how he just got out of jail. And the detective says, yeah, 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 he just got out of jail. Yes, that's correct. So confirming once again that he already has this harsh undertone with Grace that's pretty suspicious. Carissa meets with Fernando with City on the Hill, the estate, the real estate company, to get the check from the land that they've sold with this company. And he hands her the check and says, that's it. That's the, everything's final, here you go. And she looks at the check and she looks at Fernando and she says, well, I know that you are an ent entity of harmony and hope. And he says, well, not quite. I mean, we're our own LLC. And she says, no, 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 I already know the deal. I already know the situation. And he said, well, is that gonna be a problem? Because if that's gonna be a problem, then maybe we need to communicate the why this is gonna be a problem. And it's not in your best bet that you share this information. So there's a lot of deceit and, and secrets within being under that entity of harmony and hope, but they're their own LLC. And if they're their own LLC, meaning that they're associated but maybe at the end of the day, they're not 100% the boss of this real estate company. But it's evident that he works for Bob Whitmore in some type of way because of the clues that we got from the cufflinks that he wears, that he is the five-year reward of pretty much being under the undersight of Bob Whitmore, working for Bob Whitmore. And why have they been instructed to be so secretive that they're involved with Harmony and Hope? What's frustrating about this scene is Carissa looks at the check and she says, well, you know, this is a check and it's great, but after that, and then my husband losing both of his jobs, this is not even half of the money that's needed to get the house that I want. And as the viewer, you're just like, why are you telling this stranger? And the, 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 the influence of the word stranger is reiterated throughout this entire episode. The stranger AJ and stranger mentioned throughout the episode in which I'll mention and I'll point out. So AJ being the stranger, and Grace trying to welcome the stranger, the stranger of Carissa entrusting her business to this stranger, Fernando, because really who else is she talking to about her situation? She doesn't feel like her husband's in her corner or her family's in her corner. So how convenient to talk to this stranger of this real estate company that doesn't need to know your business. And so he says, well, to make sure this stays on the hush and hush and hush, let me go to my little checkbook here and maybe this can kind of settle the way that you're feeling about this entire situation. He writes her a check. We don't see the value of my uh, amount on the check. We don't know if it's a blank check. We don't know if it's just an insane amount that he's giving to Carissa, but it's evident that when he hands her the check, he's giving her this free money. And he said, oh, here you go. And who should I make it out to? And she says, oh, well, make it out to me. Another foreshadowing situation. Not only is he writing a check, but he's writing it specifically to Carissa. Ooh, not a bad thing. Because when this comes back to Boomerang, it wasn't to her husband it wasn't to be it through the church it was specifically to Carissa this gentleman knows some tricks of the trade he's on the deceit team and he probably knows and he already knows this is a bad look on Carissa's end when the truth finally comes out up, up about this this check having her name only so she takes the check and is very grateful that he's giving her a check not questioning where the money is coming from, not questioning if this is a loan and needs to be paid back. She just takes the check and says, well, yeah, this is suffice. This is enough. This is enough money. And he makes it very vivid that he's interested in Carissa and he pretty much throws himself and giving the clues and saying that I want it to be something more. Carissa, Carissa, all in the name and house. Girl, what would you do for a Klondike bar? I'm confused. 
Jacob is in his office and he's going through all of his contacts that he has in his phone, all of the numbers and all of the names. And he stops on Tasha Skanks' num uh, number and name and gives it some thought as if he wants to call her. And that's really interesting because as we saw in the previous season, that he has some interest for her and that possibly it was growing into something deeper. But before he can even consider giving her a call just to catch up or for whatever reason, Carissa walks in and says, oh, hi, how you doing? And he tries to hide it in his phone and he wasn't even looking at that contact. And she says, we need to go out and we need to celebrate. And he's just like, well, you know, how come you're not at work? She's just like, I want to celebrate this. We got the check from the land. And he says, well, you got the check for the land. So what are we celebrating? She said, we're celebrating that we can, we can get the house. That with the check, we can get the house. And I even scraped up some additional money so we can get the house and he's just like well okay once again jacob not inquiring about where she got extra money from and how she was able to scrape some additional money which is a lot of additional money he doesn't even question that but as he's doing that he seems like he's very excited to go out with carissa and to celebrate this moment and them being able to get additional money and getting the home that he proceeds to go with her and he gets the call from his mother saying that you need to come home we need to share share some information with you about grace's son and he's like grace's son he doesn't know what his mother's talking about he tells carissa and he says hey we gotta go home my mom wants to give us some information about grace's son and at that moment carissa is just like so you're gonna just throw away what i just said about not only you losing both of your jobs but somehow some way i sold the land i got that money and i got additional money to get us a house so why are we dropping that celebration with you going to your mother's beckoning call about something that she really not going to tell us about right now we got to find out when we get there and carissa says i'm not going anywhere and <laughs> what's another thing where we're starting to see the tilt shift of what i said in the previous reviews is that we will see the dynamic shift of when Jacob and Carissa start to grow apart even more, not only with family situations, but the situations and actions that they both do to pull each other apart. Not communicating secrets, lies, so we see that, that, that dynamic and that snowball churning into a big mess. So he says, well, we got to go. Are you coming in or not? And Carissa says, well, I'm not going. Why would I go? And you know, you're not even considering that of all the mess and you losing your job that I don't complain and that I haven't even left. And Jacob says, well, where would you go? I said, woo. Now that was disrespectful. Where would you go? As if she's boo-boo the fool and can't take care of herself. That was a side punch and believe the character of Carissa took note of that. And so he says, well, if you're not coming, I'm just going to leave. And Carissa is sitting there with her thoughts and she's so angry that she calls Fernando and says, hey, well, what are you doing? And do you have some free time? Lady May has the house assistant or maid or whatever you want to call it and telling her, hey, we're having a guest that's come coming by. Make sure you get rid of and put away all these valuable items. Once again, showing the dynamic of being very hypocritical. You're saying that you want to be very welcoming and you want to meet this grandson and you're accepting this stranger, once again, that key word, but your actions and your behavior say something completely different. But AJ comes by and we see Lady May and Bishop greet AJ with warm welcomes. They're hugging him. They're welcoming him in. Lady May is telling him, hey, you know, do you want to meet your cousin Zora? And yada, yada, yada. And just really trying to go above and beyond and being so welcoming. Lady May takes AJ to go meet Zora. And he says, she says, why don't you two just talk and catch up with one another and come back to the main house area in about 10 minutes and Zora can't wait to show 
uh, that she has them up on up and up and I'm in this Christian household or this Christian family but oh but do you want to go get high and AJ, AJ's just like well you know I thought you were a Christian and she was just like well yeah but you know do you want to get high or what you know and while Lady May is on, on her way back to the main house we learn that we had the detective Ellis there that's there to speak with Grace and Lady May and Bishop they hear that the detective is inquiring about an arrest for AJ. They're trying to see if her alibi checks out. And when he leaves, Lady May is saying, you know, what else is going on here? Are you lying? Is there something else going on with AJ? Is that true? Is he, is he telling the truth? A complete dynamic in thinking, I'm not even gonna ask the child I shouldn't even say child. I'm not even going to ask the young man and be fair in did you do it or not? And am I entrusting your answer? She just jumped. She just jumps. You know, of course, like, you know, well, that's her child. She's thinking about her well-being and not some stranger, even if it's her own son, to come in and so-called mess up Grace's life. Carissa meets up with Fernando from City on a Hill Company. And she's sitting there just spilling her guts about, I shared this information with my husband. I told him I had this extra money and he doesn't even look, and she's just going on and on and on. Yet, Fernando has it in his mind that he has a mission to make her do some things that she'll regret. Does he have feelings for her? truly and it maybe is not deceptive and maybe he really likes her but he knows she's a married woman and he goes in for a kiss and she says well what are you doing and he's like you know what I'm doing like come on now come on come on right yeah you know what I'm doing and he goes in for a kiss and after he goes in for a kiss she welcomes it and after she welcomes the first few kisses Carissa just jumps on them like let's saddle up and gets in his lap and they go all in and they start to kiss her and there we have it, and we have a moment where she just lets loose. She's sick and tired of the sick and tired, and being this wife of trying to do everything, and they start to become intimate. Lady May calls AJ into one of the main living rooms while we have Bishop, Grace, and AJ in one room. And as they're coming to room to the room, of course, Zora is coming in there. And Lady May is just like, give us a moment. And Zora's like, but what about dinner? Lady May is just like, just, just give us a second. Excuse us, please. So Zora leaves the room and we have Grace, Lady May Bishop, and AJ in this area. And she wants to ask AJ, this so-called incident, did you do it? And he's just like, no, I wouldn't do it. Lady, I just met you. Uh, I just got out of prison, which I was in there for five years. Why would I do such a stupid thing like that um, and get out and do something like that? Like, I don't want to go back to jail. What was interesting about this scene is that Lady May is asking him, did you do it? But she already had it pretty much decided in her mind, you did it. I'm trying to get you to admit you did. So... It's this dynamic here, again, are you welcoming and forgiving? And are you entrusting that this person is telling you the truth? Because Lady May is saying, I know this is your son or whatever situation may be, but we don't need this backfiring on you. She's just wailing and she's thinking about the church. She's thinking about grace and she's thinking about how it's gonna make her look in the image, forgetting that Lady May is just as guilty in her situations of her baby daddies <laughs> and, and situations with her own children. So it's showing us the stranger of are you forgiving and or, or aren't you? And I'm asking you what is the truth, but my mind's made up that I know you did it, so I'm trying to force you to say something. It, it, it is so much pressure that it's starting to make Grace really uncomfortable. It's making AJ really uncomfortable. You have Bishop 
trying to be gentle and ask as well, but he's pressuring him as well, saying, well, son, answer the question, answer the question, and come on. And as they're trying to pull an answer from, from him, you have Charity that walks in with an it's a boy balloon. And Grace is just like, it's a boy. Why do you have this it's a boy balloon? And she's like, well, I didn't see any you know, here's my son after 20 something years. So she's being really, really conniving, coming into the room and just rubbing it in to the face of the situation, not thinking about anybody's feelings, not thinking about somebody who's trying to get through this traumatic experience. And not only the first ex experience or the first encounter of who your grandparents are, and they're bashing you and they're pushing it and you, you know, it, it's, it's not a welcoming experience at all. You, you greeted me with open arms and now you won't take my word for it. Very unpleasant situation. It makes AJ so uncomfortable that he leaves and Grace is just flooded with tears and saying, Mom, like, you know, I'm just getting him to a place where I could communicate with him. And now you pushed him away. And she's just up to her head on everything. And Lady May doesn't seem like she's bothered at all. Like, let him go. Carissa comes back home from a night of slobbing and bobbing and kebobbing, baby. She come up in there a little tipsy, lipstick gone. And Jacob, you know, he in their room like, where you been? She said, well, you know, I had some time with Nadine to celebrate you didn't go and we could kind of tell kind of from her slurred speech and he says so you know I guess you even you know knocked back a few and uh, you know in other words I guess you you know got your drink on too and she's like well you know I celebrated you weren't there so what did I miss and he already doesn't seem interested in even speaking with her and he says you know what I gotta go back to the church. I got to go back to Calvary. And he's not even referring to it as harmony and hope. He's like, I got to go back up there. So clearly he wants to go back up to the church to get his stuff, to get his photos, to get anything that's the personal items out of the office to bring back. And it's late, you know, so of course it's going to be after hours of what the, the ch when the church is usually open so he can go get his items. And when he goes back to get his <laughs> items, we have Carissa that goes into the restroom and she looks like she's about to take the shower of shame. You know, she looks in the mirror like. <laughs> That's not funny. But she looks in the mirror and she's just about to get in the shower. And she just has that look like, yeah, I don't think it's going to be hot enough, this water, to wash off the shame, honey see the scene of AJ he's at his apartment he's packing his bags uh looking like he's ready to run away he's packing this little bottle of, of liquor we see that he has prescription drugs in a ziploc bag um but that doesn't mean anything and improving that he's guilty uh, because if you notice, they look like they were prescription bottles. The store with the video footage of him taking, of whomever in the video taking the prescription drugs, they are in the bottle form, meaning this is medicine that's in the pharmacy before they put it on the table and divide the medicine and put it, then put it in prescription bottles. Make sure you note that because in the video, the person is taking medicines that have yet to be prescribed to people. The video shows the people taking the medicine stock. The bottles that he had in the bag looked, looked like they already had the uh, name and information labels on the bottles in the clear orange bottles, meaning that they were prescribed for him. So just to, just to note that, you know, it's still open that he probably probably didn't do it because most people say, oh, he, he got the medicine right there in his bag. Pay attention. What he had in his bag was completely different from the stock medicines that were being taken in the video. But Grace knocks on the door and she sees that he's packing a bag and she's like, well, where are you going? Why are you running away? And he said, you, your family, I can't take this. You know, I, I, I'm out of here. And she says, I can't believe you're giving up on the opportunity to meet your family or create a family. He's just like, your family? 
Like the family you got, like what I just experienced when I just left y'all house. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not having that. And Grace says, if you're going to, if you run away, it's going to make you look even more guilty. You're on parole. It's not going to help the situation. Why would you want to run away? But AJ's had enough and he's telling her, I need to get out of here at this point. I don't even care anymore. And she says, well, at least take my car. And she hands him the keys. And he looks like he's going to take the keys and take her up on the offer to take her vehicle. But then he throws the keys back at her and he's just like, I'm out. You know, in other words, I'd rather make this, this escape on foot. I don't want anything else from you. Charity is back at the church, church, of course, to report that she knows the situation with Grace and AJ. And she breaks the news to Phil once again you know, stand up. I have something to tell you. This is going to be great news. And she tells him that not only does Grace have this son, but I found out that AJ was put in jail because he's be, being investigated for this crime. And on top of that, Grace lied for him as an alibi. And it's not true. And it's just this, this cluster of a mess that Charity is sharing with Phil. And Phil, Phil says, you know, that's great. Once again, that's not on her. And then also, we don't have any proof. That's kind of hearsay. And she says, oh, no. I even have it on this. And she pulls out her phone. And even Phil is just like, you recorded the conversation? She's just like, yes. Mm -hmm. And she's just so proud at bringing him such delicate information. And Phil says, you know what? Thank you. And I love your hair. And you're just so beautiful. And they, sh they start to share an endearing kiss. While this is happening, we have Jacob in his office getting together photos and all his personal items, putting them in a box to just say the end to whatever roles that he had at the church. And as he's leaving, he hears giggling and 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 some 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 cuckoos and rubbing and kiss sounds and he hears it coming from phil's office and when he gets to phil's office he sees through the glass that charity and phil are sharing very very passionate kisses and it fuels him in kind of this what in the world is going on and what is my sister doing with phil letting him know that mm, we got a mole in the family's situation. We got a mole and somebody's clearly sharing some information. He starts to put two and two together. We also see that Lady May and Bishop, they are in the bed together, kind of just cuddling and they're having a talk. And Bishop is sharing a story about how he had this vision of what his, his, his so-called envision of a perfect girl or somebody that he would meet and Lady May says, well, who was it? You know, he's just looking at her like, okay, no, it was you. Okay. Do you not see the picture I'm trying to paint here? I'm talking about, I'm talking about you, you know, I'm trying, I'm, I mean, come on, work with me. Come on now. But <laughs> Lady May, you know, she basically says, well, that's beautiful. And he says, well, <laughs> you know, let me get out of here. You know, let me get to bed, you know, cause I don't want to fall asleep in here. And she says, well, you know, you can fall asleep in here. And he's just like, oh, like, I got the opportunity to lay in here with you, huh? And she says, yes, yeah, just go to sleep in here. And he's just like, okay. So she gets comfortable with him being around her. And they get closer in the bed. And they kind of just hold each other. And she says, well, what is it? You know, why aren't you kind of going to sleep? And he says, you know what? If everything what you getting and this gut feeling that you have that everything's about to hit the fan, I just want to enjoy these last moments of peace <laughs> and feeling great and laying next to you. And let me just lay here a minute. So we see those scenes of Jacob seeing Charity and Phil and the status of Lady May and Bishop possibly building their trust and gaining their trust again with each other, being comfortable around each other. And that is how the episode ends. But you know, if I was Jacob, you know, I would open that door. What y'all doing in here? What, 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 what y'all doing? <laughs> I couldn't have just walked off. But, you know, if you're being smart about it, you want to be able to, you know, have 
the information bullets in the chamber and pop them out when you need to. So that's probably what Jacob is doing. So a few of the reviews and notes of the show. If you did not watch my reviews in the, in the last video, please watch it. I discussed how I was disappointed and how the writing has changed, the casting has changed, and it's double confirming about how my feelings are changing for this show. Um, a lot of the scenes that could have been more dramatic weren't as dramatic. The gentleman that plays AJ, the emotion for me is just not there. It's just not the reflection of somebody who has been outcasted his entire life and being in a situation like that. You know, I told you I didn't do it. You know, it's kind of like, can we get some tears? Can we get some anger? Can we get you punching the wall like Cuban Gooden Jr. and, and Boys in the Hood? Can we just get a little bit? Can, can you, can you... I need a director's hat. Hat, you know, this is really not working for me. You know, do we need a muse? Do we need inf Do we need inspiration? It's just not. Pardon me, this hair is getting in my face. It's just not there for me when it comes to the acting, the the writing. Um, I explained that we have a lot of episodes for this season, so there's no rush. There's no need to rush the series. You can take your time and develop the stories to pull the audience in just a little more. There's no need to rush everything. And I feel like the episodes are just rushing and giving us so much information that it doesn't feel genuine. I'll give a good example, okay? It seemed too easy that Carissa was just so willy-nilly that quickly to give in all this information to Fernando about her husband and her family. Now, it's possible that you don't have anybody to talk to and it seems elementary to just tell some random stranger what's going on in your life. I get that, but I think it would have been a little bit more convincing if maybe her and Fernando met several times discussing situations, right? Uh... And then eventually it leading into a kiss. And then later eventually it leaning into them meeting privately. And then them being intimate. It just seemed kind of awkward to just leap into that so fast. It just, it just it feels very rushed to me. It doesn't feel, it's unnecessary to rush the episode so fast. Uh, that's, I, I'm still feeling the same way. And I'm continuing watching this series because I'm already invested um, into the series. And I want to see how it ends. They need to bring things to a close when it comes to specific stories and storylines. Since you have so many episodes for this season, you can take the time to develop the storyline with AJ. You can take to the time to develop a storyline with what's going on with Jacob. Now, let's talk about how the characters are shifting and what's next. With Jacob, we see that he's having conflicting thoughts in calling uh, Mrs. Skanks character that he was developing feelings for and kind of emotionally connecting for and he's considering calling her right he's been fired from both positions so does that mean that he's not talking to the ball player anymore what will he be doing um the fact that jacob's character didn't question all this extra money that Carissa has come into and just kind of like this, okay, that was strange. It's, it's rushed for no reason. Um, and this is episode six, right? There's no need to go so fast. You have time to pump the brakes and not try to cram so much information into each episode. 
Uh, Charity's character. Charity being so deceitful and being so conniving against her own family. It could have been slowed down for her to address the hurt that she's been experiencing from the beginning. Are we gone, going to, to uh, address the issues that she had with her ex-husband and her son? We see flashes of her son through the episode. You know, is it ever going to be addressed with the trauma of how she felt emotionally from her man? Do you see where I'm going? There's so many issues that were, are not being addressed this season. It's just like all of these new storylines are just being thrown to us without bringing to a close or at least giving us the idea that it's going to be brought to a close or brought up again this season. So we're not going to address charity's situations with when she was gonna go on tour and she took her baby with her and we haven't seen her baby's father her ex-husband how is he doing is he seeing his son you see what i'm saying it's so much going on with each character that you could have taken your time with charity a little bit more to develop and implement her story. Instead, she's being painted this, this season to be, I want to take my family down, and the only thing on my mind is being the assistant pastor. Do you see where I'm going? It's, it's being so rushed, and let's think of something new. As the writers, you don't have to do that. You have enough to go on from the last season. With the bishop, does he not have Parkinson's anymore? I'm confused. Are we not, do we forget that? That he has health issues that he's dealing with? Uh, you see where I'm going with this. A lot of pending plots and things that we forgot about as writers that we just want to throw in the air and let's just create all new stuff. Okay. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm thinking too deeply and it's not that kind of show. But how it's disappointing is that seasons one and two didn't do that. Seasons one and two pulled us in and developed each character. And each character, we some, some, some episodes will be about charity. Some episodes will be about grace. Some episodes will be about the bishop. Now, it, it has that feeling of, man, we got to talk about each and every character each episode. That's a lot of people and a lot of information to cram into one hour. It's kind of disappointing. Still entertaining. Um, but, yeah, that's how I feel. I really encourage you to look at the review in the last video if you have not. Uh, so, that, so you don't have to hear me repeat the same stuff. Um... But that looks like how, that's how the writing is going. If we're already getting to the midpoint, almost to the midpoint of the season, I don't think the writing is going to change. I think they're going to continue to do that to try to feed us all of this information in each episode to give us more drama and unnecessary storylines and unnecessary information. That's where it's going. That's where this season is going. Um, very soap opera-ish, not more a drama seasons one and two the way that it was. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know. Feel free to light me up in the comments if you want to. Um, but I do love your opinions. I do love to debate about writings and stories because it's entertaining, right? It's entertainment and we're all looking at different stuff on TV and it's all to the good. Let me know what you think. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts. And follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, officialbun underscore e. And also look at other reviews that I have on the page as well. No need to search. Go straight to the playlist so you don't have to dig and search for everything, okay? Love you guys. Bye.